power. Yes, today's testing day. Other computers I got last video are going to be tested today with these adapters. I hope I have all the right ones. Yep, this one got no hard drive or anything. How to show? Nothing in the CD ROM. Alright, thumbs up, okay. Let's see. I'm going to get 64 megabytes of RAM. Moving the camera over so that you can see with me. The corners of the screen are a little odd. Hmm. Okay, 128 megabytes of RAM. Maybe 256. Is it 256 or 512? Wish I'd brought another little thing over. Oh wait, I did. Unlimited power adapters. Two fifty six, I'm betting. More? F tennis computer setup. Here we go. System info, Pentium 3 at 500 uh, megahertz, three processor steps, compact motor, M700, you saw this before. stubborn thing. Let's oh, stay on. Oh, the charge. Lovely. There we go. It's one of those days where I'm just, just like, shh, shh, stay off. You can do it. There's one of those. That's the parted out IBM. There's the other compact armada. And we have no light, just the one, they both have batteries. Why no power on? Which adapter was it? Was it this one? No. Perhaps it's just really, perhaps it's just really dusty. Power on. There we go. We had lights for a second. Loose power jack. Loose power jack. The shitty round drive keeps spinning up. Oh, there's something in here. Probably a blank CDR. Oh, and it's got a little something on it. I'll just power it up. Let's see if we can get this to power up.
This one you can plug in, I wonder. Another 256 megabytes of RAM. It's plugged in. Just not. This is either. This is either just not receiving power, or it's another loose power jack option. Not a thing. No, it's another loose power jack thing going on. It's powering on though. The one that is 512. that he's trying to open. Hmm, four megabytes of video memory. Fan spinning up. DVD ROM drive. It's giving me no ah, thing to see. Either the DVD ROM drive is bad or it's blocked somehow. I'm gonna shut this right back off. Ooh, jump cut. Yeah, I had to be called to bring the logs out. So let's just see what this one has. Pentium 3 at 850 megahertz and 512 megabytes or 576 megabytes of RAM. Yes. Dead battery. That's been charging for some time actually. And it's been on the whole time I was doing the lights, so it actually got pretty hot for the old P3s. That goes over here. I tested this one already. I don't know why I'm putting them over here. The more complete Toshiba Tekra charge light comes right on. I take it there's, there's no RAM in here because it's not booting up. I'm hearing something this time. Either dim screen, no screen, no display, okay. That's the issue we're having. No display, I take it there's no RAM and that's why. Do I have that more screwdriver around here? I guess I do. Let's just take a, take a quick peek and see if there is any RAM. If there is, then display issues. If not, then that's the reason. Because keepers don't boot with RAM most of the time. It was cold out there and my nose is running. No RAM. That was the issue. Okay, so I would assume it's good. Just that there's no RAM. It booted up okay. You saw the little key lights. Right, they do tighten up all the way it looks like. Sometimes the screws are stripped out and they don't Tighten in all the way, so we're just going to be sure that it will. This one didn't screw in at all. I'll get it later. I'll just leave it here. Screw there. 
a notebook computer. As we saw before, there's as we saw before, there's no hard drive. The CD-ROM cover is not going to stay on, is it? Oh well. Um, let's see where this fit it. Light anywhere? Mm, nothing there. Let's try this one. Let's get the power up. Yay. You don't need to charge the power up. Keyboard failure, CMOS invalid. Control S. Keyboard failure. Okay. Let's actually see if we can fix that again. Where did I put that little screwdriver? I lose everything, in case you didn't notice. Which never, ever helps. It was right next to me. Change it to a flathead. I don't see a reason for the keyboard to fail. It's hooked up. Let's just try. Reattaching it takes these two side things. Ram is under the cover. Will it tell us how much? I think we're starting at 12. If so, that doesn't seem too bad. This, has, this does have another control and alt key, so maybe just that one side was not in all the way. And if it is a bad keyboard, maybe it was spilled on, or maybe it's the connector onto the motherboard itself. If that's the case, then I don't see myself making much money unless I include an external, ex, external keyboard. Strong. Alright, this time the keyboard error is not coming up. Large floppy disk it. Loud floppy disk it. 256 megabytes of RAM. There we go. That's how I did it. Is there anything on the DVD ROM drive? No. Activates menus. Display.
Okay, CPU clock is 400 megahertz. I couldn't see that. Um, well, it's, it's surprising. More interruptions. I'll be right back. I'll just shut this off. Alright, that part's, that part's just really going to be completely cut out. I can't get any peach around here, as I was saying before. And that's just proof. Alright, there's a less complete Toshiba Tekra. There's the power adapter for it. Yes, it is. I hear it, but I don't see it again. Let's check the memory again. Switch to the standard Phillips head on the mini screwdriver. This one's different. Yeah, the other one was there. Uh, where's the 8100? This is the 8200, so it's a little bit different. I'm just going to assume that this has no memory either. But it sounded like there was a hard disk in it. No memory. Okay. Well, at least they're very easy to fix up. I have tons of memory, so quick resolves. If there is a hard drive with an OS, or if there is a hard drive with no OS, I'll just borrow that one's uh, DVD drive and load XP onto it. Because they got Windows and the ASCs on it, and that normally means they can handle XP just fine. Let me just load this one's last screw into it to see if it'll, just to see if it'll go in. It probably won't. You're seeing what I do. And now you're listening to what I have to deal with. So yeah, IBM is missing the battery. Actually, is this the battery to it? No, no, my bad. This is the hard drive place. Battery is all right here. Missing the DVD-ROM and well, it's kind of floppy, so I could load something onto that. It's got a fan underneath. After I think. This one will probably fit it better. No good up. Hmm. I have another power brick right here, but it's too small. probably need your battery to be in it, or a better battery. Alright, well, dud. IBM seem to be dud today. Here's the gateway. Between fans, I, I always look for that. 
standard hard drive adapter in there. No shitty room. No floppy. It does have a Pentium 3 sticker. Good to know that everything just takes the right adapter. And the fan runs a lot on this one. Control S. Control. Control S. Control S. Hello. Maybe test the other effect cable, probably the thing. We don't need this. It's the loudest fan I've ever heard. It's getting hot quickly. There we go. Ooh, Pentium 3 at 1 gigahertz. If I could get this going, it'll load and do XP fine. Large this has access mode, DOS. Yeah. Save changes, save changes now. What I want to do. Just look at extra hitting changes. And then shut down now. That looks like all it needs is a standard DVD drive. Yep, lucky me. And I didn't catch the battery. DVD drive and hard drive goes right in the front. I'm sure I have a thing to go over that. There's the vial. I already know this one's good because I tested it. I'm going to lift this little rubber feet up. Oh, feet up. Power it on. Actually, let's plug it in just in case. Windows XP is loading up. While that happens, let's look at another one. Here's the last compact armada. This one's missing the battery and CD ROM drive. This was a another one I just happened to buy. It's got a very small power jack. Very, very small power jack. This is the time for you. The small power jack I happen to have. That loaded up fairly quickly for 512 megabytes of RAM. Right, this one's loading up. Well, that counts its memory as the other few have. Let's just look around on this one. Firefox. I don't think it has a wireless adapter in it. I can always add one. I'm sure it supports one. Um, it's got the little scroll wheel here, which I really like. 64 megabytes of RAM here. Non system disk or disk error. What? Control up to the jury start. So we can get into the BIOS at all. Yeah, it was F10 here, jerks.
to have your hard drive in it. I can hear it. I don't know, it's this one, my bad. I'm looking, I'm looking over here at this one that you can't see because of the brightness. Language, English. Alright, this is a uh, Pentium 3 at 650 megahertz. But a little bit better. No battery, so I made it shut down. Seems like I'm having a lot of luck today. All these are booting up good. The Apple you saw. This, this one has an AMD 1.5 gigahertz single core processor. I told you that before. 512 megabytes of RAM. And standard stuff. And then Windows XP happened, yes. This one's got this strange, this other compact has this strange stuff all over it. This one actually has a good charging battery, so let's just unplug it and shut down. You can get a subwoofer option for that, which I think is pretty awesome. Beeping codes. Normally, that means no memory or wrong kind of memory. No memory. Yeah, it's right here. This just shut off, so I'll set this on top of it. My lies. Alright, we're here with the very last IBM. And this is the most complete laptop I've got here today. It's an i-series laptop. I've had a few of these and they always seem to work pretty good. Power on. Hard drops in it. Clicking. Not good sign. No diskettes. I'm gonna figure out where the hard drive is in this unit. Wow, it seems like every IBM I've gotten today is a dud. Where is that hard drive? That's the battery. Here's a CD floppy combo. I take it, it's under the Keyboard, maybe. Great, lost that little thing again. There it is. Let's just check and see if there's memory. Although IBM should sh should uh, boot without memory. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Ah, no memory. You jerks. You got a three with no memory. Hmm. This one sounded like it had a hard drive in it, but with no memory, it's not going to boot. And, and it was clicking anyways. Either that or it's a floppy malfunctioning. But we have one... Ah, uh, this also has a little feet to lift up and hold it off the ground some. But, yep. Yeah. Stack of IBMs in the back. 
And now we come to our last laptop, the Fosha. They have performance, one of the performance built off the Clevo's thing. Power it up. Ah, oh, failed fan. And the line's going down the screen. Very used computer. Control Alt X. It's got a 800 megahertz processor. Unknown processor. But that's good. It seems like everything has uh, booted up besides the IBMs. And it seems like I can't get that to open. Battery held something. It didn't immediately shut off. Now it does look like I can replace this fan unit with the other one. Let's see if I can. This one had no hard drive. What I'm doing is I'm going to check the heat sink, make sure it's not so clogged it's blocking the fan. Because the fan was very loud. And it's probably a reason why it, the screen was malfunctioning. Whoa. That thing is tiny. Look at that tiny processor. Hmm. That's hilarious. can see through everything okay. I think it's just a very loud fan, but the other one wasn't this loud, was it? <laughs> oh, something came out, but now I have to completely clog it up. And also work. Here it is. Oh well. Let me just plug the fan back in. Mm, most of these work good. Except the IBM's ripoffs. But yeah. I have seven minutes of recording space left. I spend the next seven minutes trying to figure out how you plug this thing back in. It is good to see such a simple cooling system and a performance laptop. Very easy to upgrade if needed. Stuff like that. I was looking at a Toshiba Shadley A45 right before I left. But seeing how it had a bad hinge like that one compact, I decided to leave it. Plus it was $45. 
No, 38, my bad. But still, a lot of money for a older computer with a bad hinge. Alright, one thing I'll actually probably do is because that one had such a low processor speed, if I can, I'll swap the processors. And then boot Windows XP on the, the other one since it was in better shape. And so this one either as is or for parts or both. Well, I mean, I'll say it powers up and everything, but limited testing done, power up only, line on the screen. Eh, 30 bucks. And considering I got this. Um, the entire green thing of laptops, other than the Apple and Sony, uh, for 30 bucks, yes. I got for the Sony for 40 the Apple for 30 and, yes. Overall, everything very low price. But yeah, five minutes of, of recording space left on this flash drive. I'm running off the flash drive for easy transfer onto the computer. Eight gigabyte flash drive. This has this whole series of videos um, coming from the flea market and testing. So, yes, all the IBMs need testing. The Toshibas need memory. And pretty much yes um thanks i really do hope you enjoyed uh one of my longest videos in a long time so yes um i never did get a chance to test this battery perhaps so as is i don't know i do all these videos for you guys and just to prove a point when i say the computer's working or not working like if the i show a computer they say it's not working, I point to this video and say, hey, look, it's working, you jerk. Well, yes. Anyways, thanks, Game Boy Out. I hope you enjoyed, and subscribe for more. Thanks, Game Boy Out.